I've been fortunate enough to hunt all over Africa, but the memory that keeps coming back the most to me is my first dangerous game hunt, and that was for a leopard in Zimbabwe. Having been to Africa in the past, I can honestly say it's one of those spots, once you go once, you want to go back. And arriving into camp, the first thing we did is we sat down and went over the game plan for the hunt. Now this was set to be a 21 day hunt, by far the longest hunt that I've ever done, the longest time away from my family. So that was going to be tough right off the bat. So our pH went over. The real work starts because you got to get the bait for the leopard. You can't even start to hunt the leopard until you go out and get some bait animals. Leopard generally like impala, so our number one goal was to go out and try to get some impala rams down so we get some baits going. See the ram. Yeah, the other rams oh, right there. Just take them out. Take one of the, take one of the other rams. Oh, nice dog. That's the last one there. Right there nearest us, that long cross. Take him out. Yeah, well done. If another one stops, be ready. Put we off your bite in you. Thank it's you. a mature ram. Thank you. So once we started getting impalas down, we started getting the baits up. With the baits, how we would do it is you'd set them up pretty close to an old creek bed because leopards like to use those old creek beds to creep along. So we had eight different baits set up, trail cams on each. So now that you have eight baits set up, now it's maintaining. So you got to keep that bait going while checking all the baits every day. Didn't take very long before we started having a leopard hit. Yeah, it just shows you how agile leopards are. Oh yeah. Clean jump six yeah. feet. But nice, nice footage that you don't often see that. No. Jumping and hanging on and pulling a piece of meat off and feeding on the ground. So once we started having the leopard hit the bait, the next thing is we had to identify it to make sure that it was a male because we could only harvest males in this area. So what we did is we actually put two other trail cams along this bait site. And the next night we verified that it was a male. After that, it became putting the blind up to be able to sneak in and out of to get in there and hunt this. And on this one, we used a pop-up blind and actually had my gun 100% secure in the rest where the leopard should be on the bait. So all we had to do was hit the light, leopard should be there. The rest is history. As luck would have it, the leopard came in right at dusk. You could, you could hear it walk out of the riverbed behind. I got on my scope and you couldn't see it in the camera, but I could actually see it walk up in dusk in my, in my scope and I identified right away. I could identify the necklace on it. And I just got giddy like a school child tapping Jim on the leg. I'm, I'm telling Tom to get ready. I'm like, it's the male, definitely the male. I've already identified it. So now I've just got to, I've got to calm down. I got to get ready to make this shot. You can shoot him when you're ready. I can't see him. I can't see him. You need the light. Well done, Ned Semblant. Uh, Mo! Well done, buddy. Good shot. Thank you. Hey. There he is. He got a whole bloody fantastic Wow, dude. It's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, well done, man. Excellent. Thank yeah. you. I've been fortunate enough to go on a couple big safaris like this to where it's not just about the leopard. That's a great trophy that was along the way, but the whole experience. The economic impact that I brought as a hunter going into the area does two things. It protects the animals in the area, and then it also gives back to the local community. On this trip, we were able to not only donate meat to the community, but also the economic impact of me being there helps the schools get built and the communication in the area. This will be a trip I never forget.